The EcoFlow Delta 2 arrived on my lap at the best possible time, stage 6 load shedding. If you're watching this content and don't know what load shedding is, basically the South African government and its owned electricity utility ESCOM are a bunch of crooks. They stole billions of rands, failed to maintain their electric grid and now it's severely damaged and a fraction of the size that South Africa needs. As a result, it can't produce enough electricity to keep everyone with power for the entire day. So during certain hours of the day, they cut your power off to help ease the load. These hours per day sometimes extend from 2 hours 3 times a day up to 12 hours a day without electricity. Yes it sucks but the point is South Africans need to find new ways to keep their lives going when the lights go out and this EcoFlow Delta 2 is one of the many options available on the market. It is a no brainer that EcoFlow enters the rather expensive territory on the market too. Some of these power solutions can set you back close to 100,000 Rand. This EcoFlow Delta 2 costs 24,999 Rand. The the truth of the matter is that for that price you can get away with other inverters. But the EcoFlow prides itself on being more than an inverter. This little box is lightweight, super quiet, charges so fast it can make your head spin and generally feels like a smart product in your home. I've also owned a number of inverters in the past. My first one was a Mesa model that weighed 70 kilograms and made loud sounds. Sure it cost me 16,000 RAM but it didn't last as long and the battery cycle is now dead meaning the charge doesn't last as long as it used to. That inverter uses cell batteries of course. This EcoFlow Delta 2 packs a 1024 watt per hour LFP battery. When you get your EcoFlow Delta 2, it comes in a brown box and includes some manuals, wires and of course the battery. I was quite surprised at how simple the user experience was for the unit. EcoFlow wants this to be approachable for all customers so you won't be overwhelmed with product sheets, ethernet cables, discs and other unnecessary things in the box. The unit comes with a standard kettle plug AC charger cord, a car charging cable, a DC5521 to DC5525 cable and a handful of paper sheets. The EcoFlow Delta 2 is a simple looking unit. It is meant to be carried around and features two large handles at the top. The unit only weighs 12 kilograms. On the front of the Delta 2 you'll find some ports and buttons and a large LCD screen. The large center button is the power button. The smaller one is the USB button that enables and disables all the USB ports on the front I.O. Speaking of USB ports, it includes two USB-A fast charging ports, two standard USB-A ports and two USB-C ports. The standard USB-A ports can output a max of 12 watts of power and includes 5 volt support. The fast charging USB-A ports can output a max of 18 watts of power and supports 5 volt, 9 volt and 12 volt. The USB-C ports are 5, 9, 12, 15, 20 volt, 5 amps and can output a max of 100 watts of power. The front is also where the LCD screen is found. It is likely the most important part of the EcoFlow Delta 2 and shows you just how much power the unit is using, outputting and how long it will take to charge and last for depending on your current load. It also shows other symbols such as heat warnings when you plug your USB device in, when the fan is being used, the Wi-Fi connection and whether or not you have an extra battery connected. On the back is where you'll find the rest of the ports. Underneath the cool flap of plastic is where the charging ports are. The EcoFlow Delta 2 lets you charge the device either with the solar kit or a standard AC cord. There's also an overload protection switch next to those ports. When I wasn't charging the unit, the flap stayed closed, which is great news for keeping dust away. The unit includes two three-prong AC output sockets and two two-prong sockets. Of course, these change depending on your region. You'll also find the car outlet and the DC5521 ports. The back includes two buttons to enable and disable all these ports. Lastly, on the side, you'll find the extra battery flap. This is used to extend the Delta 2 with another battery. You can basically buy the Delta 2 Smart Extra Battery which is identical in size and performance to the main unit but it just makes your backup better. Hopefully in the future I can test this out to see just how necessary this battery is and how much it actually extends your backup for. Setting up the EcoFlow Delta 2 was so simple. I was worried at first that it would be a bit overwhelming but in fact it was the complete opposite. The quick start guide helped a lot and within minutes I had the app downloaded, I linked the unit to my phone and the Delta 2 was connected to my wifi. 
Wi-Fi. The app is really the gem of the experience here. I could monitor the battery levels, change the rate in which the unit charged, turn on and off the USB AC port and car charging unit and so much more. There's a lot of freedom on the EcoFlow Delta 2 to tweak the experience to your lifestyle. For example, I lowered the charge rate on my unit to the trickle charge. That way the unit charges much slower than it can but at the same time improves the overall lifespan of the battery and doesn't turn on the fans while it charges. However, those who need it to charge in a hurry can leave this on by default. That way the unit charges faster. When I say faster, I really mean it. The battery can go from 0 to 80% in just under an hour with AC. It's absolutely insane. There are options to connect this unit to solar panels for charging too, but hopefully we can test all that out in the future. So as someone who spends most of their time playing games, these tests are focused on powering a gaming setup and watching TV, because what better way to pass the time during load shedding than with gaming? My gaming setup includes all modern day consoles like the PS5, the Xbox Series X and the Switch. It is also connected to a 75 inch Sony Bravia X90J full array LED TV. So the setup is quite heavy on power. If you have a 65 inch or 55 inch TV or perhaps play on a monitor, the general usage will vary and if anything will be a bit better for you. I ran tests using all three consoles as well as my gaming PC. When conducting the tests, I plugged the hardware directly into the EcoFlow Delta 2. In the ideal world, if you're following the same gaming approach, you'll want to keep your tech plugged into the unit at all times and the unit turned on. That way, when the power goes off, your stuff will remain powered on for uninterrupted gaming. I also need to mention that the TV in use offered a range of power modes. With the Eco mode disabled, the Sony Bravia X90J drew around 230 watts of power in bright scenes on movies and games. The high Eco mode greatly reduced the TV backlight and used less than 80 watts of power. In fact, the wattage draw was so low that the EcoFlow Delta 2 fans never even turned on when the TV was in high Eco mode. With this mode enabled, the estimated lifespan of a full charge of Delta 2 was over 12 hours. That's pretty impressive. Sure, the TV brightness might be an issue during the day, but in low light, I could still enjoy everything on it. At night, the brightness was more than sufficient to just watch TV. But why would anybody use Eco mode on a TV when this Delta 2 can handle so much more? I then ran tests on the PlayStation 5. The console is rated at 350 watts, but it doesn't get close to that even during the most intense games. You'll never use more than 220 watts of power power on the PlayStation 5. Add in a TV and it can go anywhere from 280 watts and 480 watts of power depending on your eco settings. Again, this all depends on your TV brightness and the eco mode you're using. If I maxed it all out and stood looking at the sun in a game, the power draw was just over 400 watts at the time. With that, the Delta 2 would last just over 2 hours, enough for a single stage of load shedding. The Xbox Series X showed similar results to the PlayStation 5, whereas the power draw was exactly the same. The console never went above 210 watts. In fact, it usually sat around 180 watts when gaming. Add this to the TV and it goes anywhere between 280 watts and 480 watts of power, depending on your eco settings. Unsurprisingly, the Nintendo Switch is the most eco-friendly console of the bunch. It barely made a dent in the power usage. Even with the TV on max brightness, the readings were as if the Switch wasn't even turned on in the first place. It only upped the general use of the EcoFlow Delta 2 by 18 watts. This means even with the TV on max brightness, you can play the Nintendo Switch for a good 4-5 to five hours on the Delta 2. PC gaming is a whole other ball game when it comes to using the inverter. There are so many different factors to consider due to the part variations, power supplies, fans, what GPU you use and so much more. I currently have the following build. With that being said, I booted up my desktop and ran some returnal benchmarks. The game maxed out the GPU and the power draw from the PC and the monitor both combined together to 350 watts. There's no real way to lower this unless I dim the monitor and reduce the overall graphics settings. At first I thought the PC would be the heaviest device I tested on the EcoFlow Delta 2, but in fact it came under the PS5 on the TV. Of course this is definitely due to the TV size compared to the monitor being used on the PC. The monitor I have contributes only 40 watts to this draw, whereas the 75 inch TV would be over 220 watts. Add that to the 300 watts from the PC and all the components and you're looking at close to 600 watts of power. So using a monitor is definitely the best way out in certain situations. So the EcoFlow Delta 2 is definitely a capable power backup. The fact that I can play PS5 on my TV for 2 hours is a dream. Sure I have to cut down some features like a sound system and turn off all my RGB lights, but it beats sitting in the dark. 
I will likely upgrade the setup with an extra battery to enable all the fancy additions sometimes in the future and even use my sound system during load shedding to say screw you ESCOM. The elephant in the room is definitely the price tag. 25,000 rand is a lot to ask for this unit, but I think the big push here is its reliability and sheer ease of use. It can boost up to 2,700 watts, charge in under an hour, and basically anybody can use it. I also enjoy how it's just the small part of a possibly larger ecosystem. You can upgrade the battery, add solar in, and after investing a bit more, have a fully fledged off the grid setup that's all built on EcoFlow products. So that's my gaming experience with the EcoFlow Delta 2. Are you looking to pick this up or have any questions? Let me know in the comments down below. I do want to send Rekshon a huge thanks for sending this device through and it saved my life during some of the worst load shedding we've had. Huge thanks for stopping by and please do consider giving this video a like and please subscribe to the channel. Visit www.glitch.online for more gaming tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell.